welcome to Turf Wars Season 4, Episode 2. Uh, we have quite a hilarious week uh, this week, hopefully. We're going to cover lots of stuff. We should hopefully also have a special guest. Um, obviously, you know, things have changed. If you're uh, new here, then maybe that's not so exciting news. But lots of things have changed on this show and I'm still changing the tech. I've just got a new microphone. Uh, so hopefully the sound is good. Um, also, this is my first attempt at having a live guest like show up in the middle of the show. So that also might be a challenge. So uh, please let me know <laughs> if everything is going well. Um, slight echo. Oh, I hope there's not a slight echo. Ew. Why is there a slight echo? I don't know how to fix that. Um, and, this, and the entry is slightly distorted. Oh, what is going on? Why is that? Why would that be? Um, another mic on. Let me just check. Let me just double check. Oh, this is so frustrating. Um, I don't think there could be anything else. There's no other, like... Oh, unless this thing has a mic. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, no. This is a bit of a panic moment. <laughs> It doesn't have anything else enabled on here. Um, aux mic is off. KT audio is on. Guest mic is off. Desktop, desktop audio, maybe that. There was nothing coming in on that. So I don't think that can be it. Oh, this is so frustrating. Sorry everyone who was really excited to see the show and the audio is crap because of my stupid new mic. Um, okay, right. Well, It'll be better next week. We're just going to have to plough on, I'm afraid. Um, anyway, welcome to the show. <laughs> Maybe we'll cut that bit out. So if you're new here, this is a show where a trans person, me, goes through the trans news um, and sees what's going on and laughs at some of the dickheads and the idiots who are trying to make our lives worse. Um, and uh, there's a lot to laugh at this week and it's going to be quite fun. Um, please do give me feedback in the comments, <laughs> maybe things like do better at your audio, but also what kind of things you want covered, whether the new segments are good, whether the guest is good, all this kind of stuff. But anyway, let's get into it, because uh, I'm also trying to make the show a little bit more concise. Um, so let's start with some good news. So I'm hoping to start each show with good news, or at least as long as we can have good news. Uh, hopefully there's at least some good news every week. And my good news that I found this week is uh, Minnesota, which is a state in the US, <laughs> for those who don't know, um, their uh, house, which is part of their government, um, has passed a trans refuge state bill. So basically a lots of states in the USA are trying to ban trans healthcare for trans children, are trying to bans trans healthcare for trans adults even, um, they're trying to pass all kinds of other laws which we'll look at in a second, and it's horrifying, and that's mainly the conservative states as you might imagine, um, but some of them are actually responding positively, and Minnesota for example uh, has just passed this law which basically, uh, so it says here, um, uh, is the first to pass a law like this, um, which prevents out-of-state laws from interfering in the practice of gender-affirming healthcare. So what that means is lots of states like um, Tennessee and stuff are trying to make it illegal for you, if you have a trans kid, for you to help your trans kid. And they want to do things like, um, you know, track people down who leave the state uh, for healthcare and Minnesota now and some other states are trying to pass laws basically to protect families and say no we're not going to cooperate with these other states legislation uh, if it's anti-trans in this way which is really good because it means that um, there are actually safe places to go because the USA is a complicated place and there's lots of laws and stuff but basically if you um, if one state passes a law saying this is illegal here and then someone in that state goes somewhere else and commits the crime, then technically that uh, state they've gone to should cooperate with the original one. They have this kind of cooperation thing going on. Um, and Minnesota is saying no, which is good because uh, as they note here, South Dakota, which is one of their neighbors, um, recently banned gender affirming healthcare. 
And I had a look, and South Dakota only has something like 500,000 people in it, so it's a very small state in terms of people. And uh, Minnesota is much bigger, with something like 7 million. Um, so that means, hopefully, that some of the otherwise stranded trans families in South Dakota and other neighbouring states can now go to Minnesota and be safe. So that is good news. It's good to see this kind of thing happening in general. It's good to see them passing. Um, and I hope if you're in one of the states near Minnesota, you might be able to get help there uh, and legal protection. So that's good. However, <laughs> that's kind of it for the good news. But that doesn't mean this episode is going to be a horrible episode. I feel like compared to last week, there was maybe more good news because Spain just passed their... Uh, um, self-ID bill. Um, but there's maybe less bad news because obviously we were dealing with um, Bri Brianna J last week or, you know, di di um, emotionally dealing with it. Uh, and there's nothing as horrible to discuss this week, which is good. But there is some bad news, of course, which we will cover. But then there's hilarious, hilarious news, fine. So the first part of the bad news is uh, Tennessee which is one of the most conservative states in the USA, has passed a drag ban, um, which is super vague. So this here is written by um, a drag queen. Uh, so And has written this article in The Independent. Um, and it says here that this week, lawmakers have passed a bill banning drag performances uh, in Tennessee. The first offence is a misdemeanor, misdemeanor and the second is a felony. This will affect not only the oft and incorrectly maligned drag queen story hours of far-right nightmares, but as critics have pointed out, could also be used to harm trans uh, people performing any shows as well as LGBT pride, LGBT pride parades. Um, uh, one of the state representatives even warned that the bill is so vaguely worded that it could lead to the arrest of musical artists like Beyonce when they perform in Tennessee. So this law has uh, basically included the most vague things possible, and it's got something like female or male impersonators, which... who knows what that means? Um, it, it could kind of mean anything, and that isn't accidental. Like, lots of the time when you look at idiots passing these laws and the things they argue in court they just come across as so ignorant and stupid you think oh this must just be incompetence but it's not like when they try and do this legislation they do get people who are obviously expert legislators to write this stuff and they want vague laws because the vaguer the law the more they can use it like to weaponize against people i mean that's the whole point in this they don't like trans people they don't like gay people they want to basically make being LGBT illegal, but they couldn't do that. So what they want to do is bring in these laws that kind of sell to the public. Oh, we don't want drag queens in front of our children, which is nonsense. But it's obviously a fear mongering thing they have going on at the moment. And then um, they hope that then they can write it. So it kind of says that, but it's so vague that it catches everything else. And now maybe if you're a trans person and you're a comedian, um, and you go and tell a joke, which is of like adult nature or something, or even just you just tell a joke, and then suddenly you count as a male impersonator or a female impersonator. Um, and if there was a child there, then maybe you can be arrested. So like that's that is the point of these kinds of things. Um, luckily, there are groups fighting against this. Um, the ACLU, for example, is a very good human human rights organization in Tennessee. Um, so it says here, they've correctly reminded lawmakers that dance, fashion and music, essential components of drag, are all protected by the First Amendment. And they've called it a malicious attempt to remove LGBTQ people from public life. <clears throat> so this isn't like done and dusted. With, as with all of these kind of anti-LGBT laws uh, in the USA, this is kind of how things work. They have some garbage conservative government and they come up with the most ridiculously evil thing that you've heard of this week um and then they pass it and then there's all these sort of different stages there's their house and their senate and their governor and all this kind of stuff um but then it goes to court and often they'll get i mean as we've seen with some of the trans healthcare bans is they get this kind of emergency judge block where the judge will say very quickly this law is blocked until we resolve it in the courts and then that drags on for 
ages. Um, so hopefully they can get a similar block on this. I mean, we'll just have to see, but uh, it's grim. And obviously when any of these pass, all of the other crap states want to do the same thing. Uh, no offense. Most of the people, as this article points out, who live in Tennessee are nice people, are accepting, don't support this stuff. The majority of them support gay marriage in Tennessee, for example, but the people in charge don't. Um, and that's just, you know, how politics seems to work. It always seems to get the most garbage people uh, into the positions of power. But um, anyway, it's a worthwhile article reading uh, to read. Um, moving on to somewhere closer to my home, um, but still not quite my home, on to Scotland. Um, so one of the big discussions this week is Nicola Sturgeon, who has been the leader of uh, Scotland for like a decade, has stepped down. And so there are people racing to replace her. And I think there's three main candidates at the moment. Um, I guess it will go down to a vote from the party. I'm not entirely sure how the SNP process works. Um, but one of the candidates is Kate Forbes. And but something like within a few hours of her announcing her sort of bid to be leader, she said she doesn't support gay marriage and she would have voted against it. Oh, which is obviously disgusting. Um, and the BBC have written an article. Uh, now, the reason I'm bringing this up, obviously, is because this is garbage. Um, but also, this, this show is kind of a bit more focused on trans rights. But, of course, she's gender critical and she's the gender critical preferred candidate. So all the gender critical people are supporting Kate Forbes because she said some anti-trans dog whistles as well. I mean as anyone who opposes gay marriage seems to do. Um, this is a BBC article on it. Um, interestingly, she has claimed, and this is what all of the like debate in the media has been about, um, she has claimed this is because of her faith, because she is a Christian and she is part of the Free Church of Scotland, which is an evangelical and Calvinist denomination of Christianity. Um, and it's kind of like very literal, like it says here, they believe that the Bible is the word of God and it should be central in all that we do. Um, and then, of course, that just means that the entire discussion is, should religious people be allowed to run for being the leader of Scotland or being allowed to be a politician? And that isn't the discussion, but that is what they all want to deflect it onto. Um, the discussion here is whether someone who is opposed to gay marriage should be leading Scotland. And the answer is obviously no. It doesn't matter what her faith is. There are loads of Christians, there are loads of Muslims, there are loads of Jewish people and, and of every religion who do support gay marriage. So to try and make this into some kind of argument about religion is just nonsense. And it's a, a purposeful deflection of all of the people who don't really like gay marriage or who don't care about it, um, who just want their person in power. But, of course, because no one the gender critical support seems to be just anti-trans or just anti-LGBT, this church also opposes abortion. Um, I mean, obviously, those three always come together. Um, she was asked about it, and she gave us... So she said similar things about gay marriage and about abortion, which is basically, this is a democracy and I don't plan to overturn the law, which is her just kind of um, dodging... Uh -oh. why do my... Um, sorry, my Zoom meeting just crashed. Let me just resend that because otherwise my guests won't be able to join. Oh, this is a right flipping tech issue scenario, isn't it? Um, right, we're back. <laughs> my goodness. Right. Um, Anyway, those three always go together, and um, it, she's given these kind of worm out answers um, to to avoid. I mean, I I do understand that some people could maybe not necessarily agree with everything that their political party uh, is going for, even if they're elite, the leader of it. I mean, running a political party requires compromise. But these are such fundamental positions. These are like anti-human rights positions. These are saying that like 5% of your constituents you don't think are equal people. Uh, 
Especially when it has like extreme, I mean, 5% when it's LGBT people, but when it comes to abortion, that's half of the people in your constituency uh, or in the country of Scotland. Um, and the church here is saying they'll look back with horror on the evil of abortion in the same way that it looks back at the evil of slavery. I mean, that's just so extreme. Um, she's also said, uh, I mean, this is kind of the, the Christian slam dunk of rubbish, um, rubbish beliefs, but uh, that sex is for marriage and that having children outside of marriage will be wrong. Um, it's just pointlessly judgmental. Loads of people have ch sex outside of marriage. Loads of, I mean, most people have sex outside of marriage. Loads of people have children outside of marriage. It's absolutely no, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and then they've obviously done this comment about um, this latest made up fiasco in Scotland about the uh, trans rapist who was put in solitary confinement in a women's prison and that was enough for them to have a massive outcry uh, and then after the risk assessment got put in a men's prison because of the risk assessment which is the normal process um, and then she says just to make just to make this whole thing even worse she says um, that this trans woman is a man because a rapist cannot be a woman uh, which is false some women are rapists um, some women are rapists by the definition of UK and Scottish law. Um, and some women are rapists, not by that definition, but in the sense that everyone means when they say rape. So this, I mean, she has garbage views. This is one of the contenders, um, Hamza Youssef. Uh, he's uh, been generally more pro-LGBT. Um, so like he backed with gay marriage legislation at an early stage, but was not present for the final vote. Better than on your announcement day coming out with you don't support gay marriage, but still not entirely perfect. Um, but yeah, so this brings me on to the last bit of the uh, UK news, which is related to this, um, that or mentioned in the last article. And this is a BBC article, and I didn't think this BBC article was that bad. Uh, I mean, for the BBC, but. Basically, um, they've banned all trans women who haven't had genital surgery and all trans women who have committed a sex crime from women's prisons. So trans women have committed a sex crime banning from women's prisons. Um, I mean, it's likely that anyone who committed a sex crime would, um, on risk assessment, not be chosen to be placed with women anyway. So that's not really a change to the law. But banning trans women who haven't haven't had surgery is actually really fucking grim. Um, so this this means that uh, you know, as people convicted of non-violent offences, um, potentially drug dealers who will be in low security prisons, um, you know, people who have there's all kinds of reasons why someone could end up in prison for a non-dangerous, non-violent situation. And now, if they haven't been able to get surgery or they don't want surgery they're put in a situation where the chance of being sexually assaulted or raped is over 60%, um, which just means that the punishment for trans people who are incarcerated is much worse than it is for cis people, particularly for trans women. Um, and so th the BBC's got some quotes in here. So Stonewalls um, pointed out that um, previously all trans prisoners were risk assessed and now they won't be, so it's kind of worse, just in general. Um, they said trans prisoners are a vulnerable population and there is no evidence to suggest that the automatic placing of trans women in line with their sex assigned at birth is safer than an individual risk assessment. I mean, of course, there's no evidence. None, none of this government is ever going to do any kind of, you know, pay, uh, pay attention to any kind of evidence for anything to do with trans people. Uh, they're not interested in that at all. Um, but I mean, he still said, well, we took time to do it very carefully and assiduously, but I mean, did they fuck? They've just come up with some blanket ruling in direct reaction to one nonsense case that the media's kind of made up. Um, they say it's not related to that, but it obviously is. Um, I mean, I feel like when they do this, he's... So this is Dominic Raab, who's um, been in charge of this. He says the government wanted to have a liberal, sensitive and tolerant approach to the LGBT community. They always just say the complete opposite of what they're doing. I mean, just as like some kind of deflection or distraction. Um, 
He said that we suffer a lot in this country with mental health issues. Oh gosh, I wonder what mental health issues those are, caused by all the ridiculous amount of transphobic hatred and the government that he is part of pushing anti-trans regulation. Um, so, oh yeah, and it obviously has to use the... We would introduce new rules which mean that any trans offender with their men male genitalia intact... I mean, what does that mean? Does that mean people who have been circumcised uh, go to aren't forced into a men's prison? Um, no, it doesn't mean that. They always have to use these little garbage phrases that have, haven't obviously never uh, talked to any trans people before doing this. Um, yeah, so anyway, but this is kind of why the BBC article I didn't think was so bad. They kind of just quoted Stonewall, uh, quoted Dominic Rubb, not really added any kind of BBC bullshit, but then they've said um, there were only 230 trans prisoners out of 80,000 in England and Wales. Of these, 180% reported their gender as male and 43 as female. There were only six trans women in female estates. So this regulation they brought in at most affects six people. Um, it today obviously affects people in future. But the, the idea that they couldn't risk assess these six people, or even these 230 people, I mean, you know, some of these people will be in prison for long sentences, and some won't. Um, it's not like they're having to do 10 risk assessments a day or something, it's completely unreasonable. I mean, likely this is like, you know, uh, one every couple of weeks or something. Um, and there's no, there's, there's not been, uh, rapists put into women's prisons. The only um, uh, situation, which is this one they keep raising, of uh, um, Isla Bryson, um, as we mentioned earlier, she's put into solitary confinement, so wasn't with the general population, um, and then was moved to a men's prison on risk assessment anyway. It's all just uh, such a load of garbage. Um, but... Hopefully, we can move on from this now, and hopefully we can uh, bring in our guest, and we won't have a trilogy of tech, tech issues. Um, so hopefully she will join in a bit. Um, but while we wait for that, let's quickly cover the start of this next story. So, <laughs> if you haven't seen this blowing up on Twitter in the last two days, then you're in for a treat, because this is fucking ridiculous. Um, so this is an article in the Daily Mail by Ruby Sampson, who says, I was frozen to the spot in shock. It was said to be, it was said to intimidate how a friendly pub chat and the ladies of a London pub turned menacing and plunged a Tory councillor, 22, into the clash between trans rights and women's safety. Oh, already the Daily Mail, I mean, obviously the Daily Mail is trying to, the Daily Mail which is like one of the most misogynistic newspapers in existence. Uh, it's, of course, pushing this nonsense battle between rights and safety, uh, which doesn't exist. But so, um, so Ruby has uh, written this article herself, and um, oh, guests arrive. I'll just I'll I'll bring you in in a sec. Um, so. So Ruby's written this article herself just to say about her experience and it's very kind of personable, you know, I don't feel safe going to the ladies alone, um, went to this pub, she says it was a Wednesday night and I was attending an event upstairs before heading home after a pleasant evening. I went to the ladies loo which has two cubicles, all normal so far. I emerged from mine at the same time as the woman next door who was about six feet tall, towered over me, you know. Something you might notice, not really necessary, but very importantly, when you know uh, how anti-trans people write about trans people, they always have to set the scene and they always have to describe someone as uh, as like as manly as possible. And uh, another sentence here: she wore a skimpy top, which made her shoulders seem bigger. Like, what was the point in saying that? Like, what does this add? It's just such a load of nonsense. I mean, bigger than what? Bigger than they were like. I mean, wearing shoulder pads makes your shoulder... Anyway, total fucking nonsense. And then she spoke with a deep voice. A trans woman! The lavatory was cramped and I had to stand behind her like shock horror. Um, and then she says, uh, We had uh, a sense of novelty. What would she be like? Well, 
We had a nice chat. That's important, by the way. Having a nice chat. Not exactly girly. Oh, well, you know what flipping trans women are like. They're too girly and not girly enough at the same time. She said, I thought this is going, this is not what a normal person thinks. I thought this is going well. I'm handling the situation fine. I didn't treat her any differently. Why would I? I mean, good. Most people don't need to like monologue them being normal, but okay. Um, we spoke about the paucity, I didn't know what that word meant before. Paucity of blue paper, the dreadful taps and temperamental hand dryer. Uh, it was as she moved to the door to leave it that it happened. I remarked that we had no choice but to awkwardly shake her hands dry. And she turned to me and replied, I'm going to wipe my hands on my penis. <laughs> and with that, she disappeared. <laughs> what? So, obviously, uh, tr everyone watching knows this is just made up, right? Like, th there's no way any human in the history of humanity has said, I'm going to dry my hands on my penis. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think, I think this is trivially made up. When I first saw this, I thought it was kind of hilarious, and then I realised that she was doing the usual media rounds, and it was all a load of fucking garbage. Um, but then, interestingly, so we can cover a little bit more of this article in a second, but I was, I was actually thinking, like, I wonder, <clears throat> you know, I, I was thinking, did she even go in a room with a trans woman? But I was thinking she probably did. Um, but I wonder if the trans woman who this was, was like out there and would be able to say her side of the story. And it kind of oddly turns out that it may well have been, uh, Good friend of the show, Sophie from Mars. So let's bring in our guest with my new guest intro music, which sounds a little bit like it's from Sonic, but it isn't because I wrote it. But... Yay, Sophie! Hello! How, how are you? Let's hope that everyone can hear your sound. <laughs> um, but we've had some tech issues on um... the show already. Um, how, how do I sound to you? Uh, my voice is a little uh, deeper than usual because uh, I I have a cold. And um, yesterday I woke up with a bit of a cold and then I went and yelled at uh, turfs and cops at the counter demo. Um, I was actually like uh, one of the chant leaders. So right. it's really important. People might not know this, but it's really important at a demo when you're doing like call and response for the people who are doing the call to be really loud and like disperse through the crowd yeah. so that everyone can be in unison. So you, you know, you have all your chant leaders being like, whose streets? So that all of the crowd can say our streets, right? And I have pretty big lungs, so I can be quite loud. And um I uh I decided to put the uh the good of the demo ahead of my uh my throat <laughs> health, I guess. Um, so I'm going to be quite hoarse throughout this, but I, um, That's okay. you know, I, I think it was a worthwhile sacrifice to be honest, because, uh, we did chant, um, one, three, one, two, go home and tell your mother, ACAB, Wayne Cousins is my brother at the cops. And they all looked deeply shook. So I, I'm, pr I'm proud of myself. Well, it's worth it. Sacrificing your, well, I don't know. Your voice still sounds fine. So though. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't sound fine to no, what's the name again? Ruby. I have, I have such something. a deep voice. And Ruby it, Sampson. It, it immediately indicates that I'm a terrifying trans woman. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you were saying how I. It, it's setting me up to sound. Well, we can get to me in a second, but yeah. setting up this woman to sound as manly as possible. But, like, I've been rereading it a little bit over the day, and I'm realizing that, like, she's just a bit. She's just being a bit creepy, really. Like she's just um It is creepy. Looking at this woman's body quite intensely. Again, uh arguably my body quite intensely. Um, which is kind of in line with someone who would um who would be thinking about what's in their other people's pants all the time, right? Well, exactly. And and I think I mean we'll come on to this in a bit, but this obviously has tried to be I mean, this article and she's obviously gonna try and present herself as just some normal person whose first ever interaction. Oh, I've never considered a trans person before. I am obviously I mean, a good person. I believe she's never met a trans person. But, uh, yes, she never, she never, but she has thought about trans people before. Yes. Um, she never met or discussed or talked with or engaged positively with a trans person before. 
but she's obviously thought about this before, but she wants to present it as if it's just, she was just being goodwill and then obviously this uh, wet-handed, dry penis <laughs> trans woman <laughs> just broke the normality of the situation and meant that she was justified in her response. But you can see, like, I think most trans people will be able to see, and pro hopefully most cis people will be able to see, that this, like this, I thought, this is going well, I'm handling the situation oh, That just isn't how someone yeah. who is normal reacts to these kind of things. I hate to, I hate, like, I hate to compare to racism because as a white person it's a bit cringe of me to do, but like, it works just as well if you imagine a black woman, a working class woman, a, a lesbian, if she'd never met a lesbian before, and if she's thinking, I'm doing really well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. anything bigoted right now, I really want to, but I'm not. Uh, yeah, exactly, that's, I mean, that's the kind of vibe it comes up, but obviously, uh, she has a gender critical history and has been yeah. liking the extreme gender critical posts, which we will cover in a second. Yeah. Um, but, so, so you, so yeah, so we'll just, um, yeah, actually, let's cover your story next. So you, okay. so, so we, this, uh, this, she wrote this like two days ago or yeah. yesterday and oh, as part of the weekend assault on trans people, you know, I mean, there's, there's yeah. a constant assault, but the weekends are always worse. Um, and then yeah, I guess every, if you saw are it? with the British press, every weekend they have a little party and they defend nonces and attack trans people. Yeah. And, and travelers and immigrants. Yeah. And travelers and immigrants. Yeah. yeah. And young people. But yeah, so then you, what, you discovered this and were like, holy fuck? <laughs> well, a weird thing is, um, the top reply to her originally <laughs> sharing the article is still you, and then me underneath that saying, uh, what did I say? Because it was so weird, right? I said, yeah, I said, I don't know what kind of giga chad this hypothetical <laughs> trans girl is, but I keep trying to imagine a penis that would be in any way an appropriate thing to dry your hands on, and I have to conclude it's just massive. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I found that really funny when I went But back also to very dry. Today. Yeah, apparently really absorbent. A, a so, someone absorbent pointed penis. out that it was likely Ben Shapiro because he's very good at drying things out with his penis. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. It was probably Ben Shapiro in drag, actually. No, but I mean, they, she said that the, the woman was six foot tall, so... Oh, that's true. Um, you can't be in. Yeah, so basically this morning... Um, basically this morning, a friend of mine pointed out that the pub that is in the article was the same pub that we went to after the vigil for Brianna Jai. So, I mean, setting the scene, we had just been to a vigil for a murdered child. Um, so this turf really picked her moments, you know? Um, she, um, and, and she wasn't at the vigil. She was at an event upstairs no, in the no, pub. Exactly. That's quite worth noting. Well, so that was the weird thing, right? So my friend said, okay, she says it was a Wednesday night. She says it was this pub. That was the pub we went to. And that was a Wednesday. And so my friend, joking, was like, all right, which one of you fuckers said that you dried your hands on your penis? <laughs> and I had to think about it for a minute. And I reread the article. And I remembered that I was wearing this black halter neck top, right? It was backless. So it was it was showing off my, my back. Like, showing my, off your shoulders. Of shoulder, shoulder muscles quite a bit. Um, but kind of my whole back. So, you know, it's kind of a focal point is my point. Um... I remembered that when I went to the ladies, it was upstairs and there was a sign on the stairs that's saying that was a, there was an event going on in the rooms upstairs besides the ladies. Um, and I'd been up, up in the loo and there had been a cis woman in there when I went in uh, who was clearly with the people upstairs. And I was like, okay. Uh, and then I thought it through and I realized that what happened was, you know, I made some awkward, like, small talk with this woman and um like she says in the article there wasn't enough toilet paper uh the taps were shit the hand dryer was garbage i mean every british said, pub basically. every british pub basically yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's very normal <clears throat> then she um then as i was about to walk out having given up on the hand dryer she said uh we'll have to shake and i like paused for a second because i was kind of processing like obviously she didn't mean we were going to shake hands but for a second you know your brain yeah yeah thing, yeah it's like it sounds like someone's saying a thing so it kind of threw me for a second and then i was like uh i'll i'll i'm just gonna wipe my hands on my jeans and um i guess i guess what's happened here is that 
she saw a trans woman and then in her head she was just like penis 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 and then when i said i'll just wipe my hands on my jeans i guess she heard i'm gonna wipe my hands on my penis which doesn't even make sense as a sentence like it it's the kind of thing that would have you go like if you honestly misheard it like that you would it's kind of thing that would most people would go like excuse me yeah sorry what did he just say um, I'm gonna drive my penis home to the on in the commute. Like <laughs> it's so weird. Take and, my pet um, penis for a walk. It, it was it was really bizarre because like <clears throat> as well as um as well as this apparently happening, which I didn't think anything of at the time because it was just like awkward small talk as far as I knew. Um, also while we were there because it was like a Tory pub in the middle of Westminster, there were a bunch of guys having a really anti-Semitic conversation outside. Like, I went outside and there was a guy in a Balenciaga cap trying to tell two black guys that Ye was right about the Jews. And all of them were being like, yeah, I've never met a Jew. So I think what you're saying is probably true, but I can't confirm. And, like, <clears throat> because that was happening on the night, and because we had just been at this vigil and we, oh, knew we were oh, in I could not be bothered. Like, we had a real sense that, like, <sighs> we were in the, you know, belly of the beast, like, absolute, like, well, that's what she was there. nightmare. How and, else would um, you end up being a Tory councillor at 22 years old? <laughs> right, I mean, that is the that is the starting point. Red right? flag. If you're a Tory councillor at 22, you do have the most normal brain known to mankind. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was quite funny about the, the anti-Semite as well, because my partner, Nat, is, um, her family is Jewish, and so, like, she went out to just start arguing with... I came in from having a smoke, and then I was like, yeah, some dudes are having a bit of a sketchy conversation outside, and Nat was immediately like, I'm going to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> Because she, she's like that. She's great. Um, yeah, and then I didn't think about it. And we went home. And then, like I say, found out this morning that, <laughs> that I'm the penis woman. <laughs> the. Not yeah. A. No, the, not anymore. I used the, to just be a penis woman. Now I'm the penis woman. The woman with a penis so big you can dry hands on it. Um, <laughs> so this little bit of the article, which she wrote, I think, like you were just saying penis got in her mind i mean she's saying why would you assert the fact that you'd had a penis in a fi female single sex space i felt like it had been flashed as the penis image was put into my mind by her announcement i mean she's just getting the order wrong here obviously it was in her mind already yeah very, <laughs> and, very clearly. and she just well i i think there's 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 two possibilities well there's three possibilities here one is actually this would as a different situation, I mean, it seems unlikely, and she's maybe totally made it up, or it was a different trans woman, Poss possibly, but I, I think it does match with your story. But I, th I think yeah. that leaves two options. One is she was having well, a little. No, here's one thing about about it matching. <clears throat> I have to say, we were in that pub that night, like the night she's talking about for sure, because she also wrote a letter to Kemi Badenoch and said mm. it was the fifteenth, which was the yeah. day of the vigil. It was that pub. We were in there and there were no other trans people, shockingly, in this hyper Tory pub. So it was literally either me or one of my friends. And based on the physical descriptions, it was me. And I remember it a thing like that happening. Yeah, so I, I didn't say it... I was going to wipe my hands on my penis. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I know, really weird. Unbelievably. But I, didn't say that. but I think that gives us two <laughs> options. One is she was having a little trans panic moment in her brain and her brain heard the word penis or wanted to hear the word penis, which I yeah. think is the charitable option because the other option yeah. is she knows what she heard and she's lying. Yeah. And I, I don't, I mean, I think that's more reasonable. I, do, I think that if, if I was having a little panic, you know, if I was a transphobe or a homophobe or a racist or something and someone said something to me like oh i'm gonna dry my hands on my penis i'll be like if that i had that in my brain i'd be like what that doesn't make yeah. any sense that can't that can't have been what they said um but i might go and well, lie about it to my friends like i, I am like despite her being a tory counselor and therefore one of just the worst people on earth like i i do have to remember that she's 22 and i'm i'm trying to allow for some just like now you can see youth i guess even though, like Which... you're saying, it's like, honestly, it's kind of less <laughs> weird if she fully manufactured a lie. Mm. Like, if she fully just stood there and went like, I can make a Daily Mail article out of this. I can, <laughs> but I can, wouldn't you I can say... put my way into the turf sphere. Well, right what now. makes that, uh, yeah, well, that's, that's obviously what's going on here. But if, 
If you were just going to totally make it up, wouldn't you go with she said, oh, I've got a penis and then left, which is still nonsense. No one would actually say that, but it's I mean, more yeah, reasonable. Yeah, you'd go with like, you'd go with like, <laughs> She, she made a comment about my body, or she or she showed her penis, or something like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. You just go, you just go the hog, the whole hog, so to speak. Um, so, but yeah. Anyway, moving on to some more parts of this article, uh, she says, "Are we to live in fear every time we use a public toilet? We might encounter a threatening trans woman with a penis." Like, I hate these sentences. There's so many layers of bullshit here. I mean, as m you should live in fear of a trans woman as much as you should of a threatening cis woman, which also yeah. just happened. Like. I, I've I've been in a situation where I like fled into the women's toilets and some cis women followed me and my friend in and started banging on the doors and like shouting at us. N not for me being trans, nothing to do with that. Just from she was getting aggressive with us in a discussion outside. I mean, that happens. That was terrifying. I worry about that sometimes. Why yeah. would a trans woman be worse than a cis woman? And with a penis. I mean, that again, it, it's just the, yeah, the issue mean, here is the threatening part. But they're always trying to link all these things together. But There's the... a few things to it, like the threat, the threatening part, like um, the threat is the threat is just her hearing the wrong words. Like they were that even in even in the version where someone says to her, "I'm gonna dry my hands on my penis," it's like the only way someone <laughs> That's would funny even. Every time. I'm trying to think. I know, I know. It's just like <laughs> it, it's a gift that keeps on giving because it's just so silly. But like, I I really strain the imagination to try and think like. Maybe someone would say it if they were like trying to make a joke to like break the ice because they could tell that you were being weird because they're trans. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe. exactly. It's not even maybe. threatening, not even if threat, it's true. It? If, if... And I do find like I, I really feel the need to say this that like given that this article is actually like sexual harassment, it is like mm. talking about trans women's genitalia, it is focusing like really under a microscope creepy of trans women's bodies, bodies in a yeah. really creepy way. Yeah. I there are a few layers that I'm really bothered by about like the the threatening stuff because like <clears throat> I had a friend point out to me today actually like it's weird how she kind of describes the the idea of like just hearing the word penis basically as as if it's like an assault. Mm. And then and as if that's but worse then, than all this stuff that in, she's done in the Sense. But, well, but then she's written an article and a letter where she does use the word. So, you know, if talking about a penis is, is a crime, then, you know, <laughs> she's doing it too. Um, <laughs> what if someone also, read this in the toilet? <laughs> right. What if, what if someone who is a terrified of male bodies and male genitalia? But anyway, uh, like, and the other part of it I just find really awful is, like, in her letter to Kemi Badenoch, she, she starts talking about, like, just basically going into like a, a a horrible kind of fantasy of like what if this person did horrible things yeah. to me, and I find it really upsetting because like I am actually a survivor of sexual assault, and like she's just imagining like as or yes yeah. as or two thirds of trans said, I'll people. Dry my hands on my penis, but she didn't even actually say that. Like, what if she did a thing? It's like fuck. I know. Me. It's like I saw a trans woman at the laundrette. What if she shot me in the face? <laughs> like that would be bad therefore we should ban trans women from washing their clothes um but there's another situation you won't want to see a trans woman at and that is the optician this is another amazing line from this article oh, which i love this so much. <laughs> made me laugh so much she said this blurring of the sexes is now everywhere i went to boots opticians and by accident tried on a pair of men's glasses that were too big for my face because men have biologically bigger faces. And the assistant said there were new rules and all the glasses now mixed up. Like That's quite that's quite funny because I actually wear glasses and um Female they're actually, glasses. They're actually Kylie Minogue brand designer <laughs> designer frames. Um they are for women. Um and I have quite a big head. So what what they are, you see, is just large women's glasses. Yeah, exactly. Like glasses, you so can get weird. glasses in all kinds of sizes. Like one of my I best friends. Say this. When I was getting these glasses, they were actually gender segregated. Like <laughs> there was a women's side of the store and a men's side of the store. So I don't even know what she's talking about here. And I mean, this idea that like when when there are like men's and women's glasses, obviously the size is a part of the the gendering of the glasses because you can right. get big and small of both. They might make more bigger ones for the men's fashions and the more smaller ones for the women's fashions. But ideally, you wouldn't have 
Well, ideally, you would you would have a, a range of sizes, and there wouldn't be gendered styles because yeah. if you want women's glasses, you should be able to get them in a size that fits you, and if you want men's glasses, you should be able to get them in a size that fits you, regardless of whether you're a man or woman. You want, babe? Yeah, it's ridiculous. But uh, I thought we'd. If you do, you have energy to look at some of the garbage things that she's been liking about you. I've, on Twitter? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've been looking at some of the things they've been saying on Mum's Net about me, so I, I, I think I can That's tolerate a... her okay. likes. That's all right. So this uh, user Mimi has um, com uh, compiled some of the likes she's done today. So here is from Deborah Ferguson, uh, of yeah. course, responding to the Posey Parker retweet of the. Of, of course, original, of course. Saying, I felt sick reading this. Sorry if you had to deal with that. My partner said he'd have not... It's actually quite funny, by the way, because um, my, my voice is fucked because the demo we were countering it's was, Posey was, Posey. was literally your uh, MS brand, Eva Braun, Posey Parker herself. <laughs> Nazi Barbie. It's, isn't it nice when it all just comes together as a circle? We're all just one big family. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pointed this out about their demo, like... Half the people on their sides had like fa really fancy camera setups and were just trying to make content. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. And everyone on our side are just trying to protect our ability to like live as queer people. And um, that, that says it all. Really. The, <laughs> the full circle is like, I was at a demo. <laughs> I was at a demo where these these grifters were just trying to make content out of being hateful. And now my voice is fucked. And now I'm, I'm here making content about them making <laughs> be content <laughs> about being hateful. <laughs> It's so meta. <laughs> but but uh, Deborah Ferguson here says that her partner would have knocked her block off, which is just a threat for an assault. And yeah. uh, Ruby a has liked this. Venus woman. Ruby has liked this. She likes that yeah. there's a few here which is just claims that any, any trans woman... So they always talk about self-ID, which is one of like yeah. her argument is about... <laughs> Self ID, but she doesn't know if you've got a GRC or not. I don't know. I don't. She. I don't. I. Do but not, you might. Uh, you might have had. Like, how would she I know? I don't want the license for being for being a girl. Uh, I have it on my passport. That's all I need. Well, you know. and you didn't self ID. Well, I mean, you do self ID your passport, but like, what? What? She doesn't know what things documents you have because she didn't check. No. Like, I so mean, it's completely thing, nonsense. She doesn't know accusation. I have a penis. Like, well, yeah. I mean, that's also that's a thing on top of everything else. Um. But yeah, and then they just obviously declaring that it's. Uh, in a you were in a dress and it, it's a fetish and you know she's liking all this sick man in a dress with your... a fetish. I find that one really funny because I do have some fetishes, but as I've stated, I was not in a dress. I was yeah. wearing jeans. <laughs> it's literally part of the well, it's not part of the <laughs> her story. It's part of the real story. Yeah. Um, but um, and then we've got um, some anti-vaxxer person here saying. Women are risking rape by using the public bathrooms. Like instant ex escalation yeah. from you, um, well, not having somewhere to dry your hands to suddenly now you're a rapist. Um, yeah. And this one says they are all fucking vile. Keep them all well away from women and children. Full stop. So now she's just liking things, saying that all trans women shouldn't be around children. So the full like straight away within twenty four hours of her posting this story, she's already on the trans people shouldn't be around children. Horror show, um, yep. that, like Good this. Stuff. You no one. Uh, just imagine the situation she's posed is she's a neutral bystander who doesn't know about trans people. She meets a trans person. One says, "I'm going to dry my hands on my penis," and then within twenty four hours, she's like, "Yeah, they probably should be kept away from children." <laughs> like, yeah, it. That's just yeah. not a credible situation. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's loads more of this, um, but yeah, that was. Uh, that was a situation. Thanks for coming on and um, talking through this nonsense with me. Would you like to see? Uh, so I, I have a few themes uh, of, of this show now, and I've got all yeah. these little like flashy intro things and stuff. Okay. Would you like to stay around for another couple of minutes to see our dickhead of the week? Absolutely. Okay, so we can do dickhead of the week, and then I'll let you go. Um, so this is. Um, <laughs> Whoa, it's me! Oh my god! Wow, it's, it's been you the whole time. Whoa. <laughs> no, this is our dickhead of the week. This is Alex McKenzie, who's just some random on Twitter. I, I was you, just scrolling through replies. Someone replied to my friend Erin here, and she said something about oh, it's about regret. There was some new study that found 
six out of 2,000 people regretted trans surgeries. It was like 0.3%. So well, we should probably <clears throat> we should probably stop all trans surgeries until we figure out a way to stop people from ever regretting them. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. obviously what we want here. But so Alex has come in here with a very um, astute observation. How long after the surgery were they asked? And there's loads of things you could say, like, you know what he's trying to do here? He's trying to cast doubt in the studies. And I just couldn't be bothered. I took one second to just write that. Because I hate it when people say the surgery, because it's like, which one? Face surgery, yeah. top surgery, yeah. like there's a range. So I just wrote the, and Alex did not like this. So his first reply was, the what, you fucking idiot? And I think, to be honest, that's not too bad a reply. Like, you might yeah, write that, I mean, you might write that, but, but then within a few he's, minutes. He's not getting what you're laying down. He's confused. He's, he's getting, confused. He's getting mad. Within a few minutes, he started writing a lot of replies to me. Oh, he wrote wow. on his timeline, could someone explain to me what the fuck this idiot Katie Montgomery's problem is? There's absolutely <laughs> nothing grammatically wrong with my question. I haven't gendered or misgendered anyone. So what the fuck is the issue? So, and then he came onto one of my other posts and said, so you think you've got the right to patrol a website you're not even the administrator on, putting stupid comments and grammatically perfect comments? You I think mean, you have the right to reply to <laughs> tweets? <laughs> but you have a license for those tweets, Katie. <laughs> then, because I didn't reply, to, I didn't have time to reply to any of these because this is pretty quick fire. Um, that oh no, do I have the DMs? Oh no, oh no, oh piss! He sent me some DMs. Oh, so annoying. It basically DM'd he said you? It, he oh the DMs are the best bit. Hang on, I've got to find these DMs because okay. Um, um, I'm sure I have the. Uh, oh no! All you said was the, and he's lost <laughs> his entire mind. <laughs> um, I can definitely get these up because I know what I'm searching for. You can't um, just patrol a website saying <laughs> the to poor unsuspecting men. <laughs> he might picture a penis after you say the, <laughs> and that's basically assault. <laughs> so here we go. This was his next thing that he said. Oh wow! Um, uh. So he sent me this DM saying, what is your Ooh. fucking problem with this shit? With this the shit, you effing C? My it's reply- It's a little like, hard to pause, <laughs> right? With the with this the shit. It's like my dad once said, um, there's a way you can have, if I think it's like five ands in a row in a sentence. And it's oh, like yeah. talking about spacing in words. Like the, uh, what, like ball and chain <clears> name <throat> for a pub. I think there should be a bit more space between ball and 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 chain. It's like that. Oh right, yeah, the, yeah. With this the shit. With this the shit, you fucking c word. My reply yeah. is grammatically correct. He's very annoyed about the grammar. He's he's totally missed what I'm actually trying to say. <laughs> fucking correct. Abd doesn't misgender it, even gender anyone. And a fucking idiot like you isn't going to treat me like a five-year-old, not explain, then sashay off <laughs> and get okay. away with it. The wrong spelling of sashay. With it. So fucking explain yourself right fucking now. Then he waited sashay two off. minutes and was like, would you like a hard slap? Oh, then four no. more minutes. <laughs> fucking explain yourself, bitch. And then Ugh. I'm twice your age. I've worked since I left school and I've served in my country's armed forces. <laughs> I'm not putting up with any shit from a jumped up college tart should, like you. He should just <laughs> bust out the like, I'm a US Marine sniper with yeah. 360 confirmed kills. <laughs> <laughs> and then he blocked me. <laughs> but he carried on to eat. Oh, it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. It, he carried on. Oh! Ah! It's okay. He carried on tweeting at me. Um. And then he got all of his tweets deleted, and then he I got can't suspended. You just sashayed off like you were doing <laughs> ballroom drag. I can't believe you just like, <laughs> as soon as you were like done with him. So so sassy of you. That is the danger of saying the word the. <laughs> Have you These ever... transsexuals just keep saying the online? <laughs> Every time I say that online, a transphobe's account gets banned. <laughs> we always thought it was pronouns they were afraid of. It turns out it's actually articles. <laughs> it ruins their entire brain. It's the the that they don't yeah. like. <laughs> anyway, Sophie, thanks very much for coming on. Would you, you like to... Sh sh 
Would you like to shill your YouTube or your oh, Twitter? Oh, absolutely, or? yeah. Um, what do I want to shill? Uh, the FBI killed MLK. Um, <laughs> check out uh, Red Planet every Sunday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. UK time on twitch.tv slash redplanetlive. It's a weekly Call Me Roundtable where we chat about based stuff. Um, we have a what's the most based thing you did this week section. So if you're going to show up in the chat, have a think about what you what was the most base thing you did this week. Uh, I know that my one was being the penis woman. Being the penis yell, woman. Mine was saying the. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, also, um, just... if you check out patreon.com slash Sophie from Mars, that's kind of where all my work is gathered together and it helps me pay the bills and stuff. And I make YouTube video essays on youtube.com. Cool. Yeah. Just before you yeah. go, I was just thinking, it, it reminds me of... Um... Have you seen that Dexter's Laboratory episode where he tries to learn French and then he builds this machine to teach him the whole French dictionary and he gets stuck on the word fromage? So in the morning he can only say the word fromage and he thinks he's ruined his life, but then every single thing, like all these things happen in his day where it, it's the right solution. Like he goes in on the French test and the question is just question one, cheese with a question, question mark. And then he writes fromage and he gets 100%. And oh like, he, he like solves world peace and all this kind of, anyway, that's what it's like. I'd just be like, yeah, you just said the, the, and everyone's like, Whoa! Yeah, that's, you, that's, you the, uh, that's you at the world peace conference of yeah. the UN <laughs> trying to like de-escalate tensions between America and Russia. They're ready to nuke each other, and you're like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> All the transphobes just explode. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, great to see me. you. See you around. Bye. Yay, so that was fun. Fun time. Now you know how to dry your hands on your genitals. I'm sure that you could dry your hands on non-penis genitals too. Uh, I'm sure that's a, a just as credible suggestion as the other ones. Um, but that isn't the end of the show. We have a couple more things to cover. Um, I wanted to go... <laughs> Actually, let's just ignore that one. This is something I kind of wanted to rant off on. So, bit of a pace change, um, but we do have another couple of funny things to come to. So just trying to go through this, like all the things that happened this week and come up with everything to discuss. Um, and this is something I wanted to cover. So, uh, one of my friends describes themselves as a femboy and was getting all kinds of disgusting comments from gender criticals saying, you know, you're an AGP and you're a disgusting man and you shouldn't be around children. All this kind of stuff they say to anyone who doesn't look right to them. And I said, fuck off, basically. Uh, and I got a DM. <clears throat> from a lady who says, Hi Katie, thanks for slapping down that idiot who said femboys were disgusting in your tweet earlier. My son is a feminine dressing man and he's had so much hate for it. He's been told he must be a trans woman if he wears skirts. Also that he's transphobic and is mocking trans women and cis women if he wears skirts. Or that he must identify as non-binary. His mental health is very really bad and he feels he must be inherently offensive somehow. He doesn't believe me when I tell him that this isn't the general view, so it meant a lot seeing you say that as I greatly respect your work, thanks. And I said to her, could I post about this? And she said, yeah. <laughs> Who's sending super chats in the, you should ban them, it's too dangerous in these parts. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and then she said, I would love that. He said so much hate from inside the LGBT community, uh, who I assured him were his people and would support him. I don't know where this new dogmatism has come from. Why can't a man wear a skirt and cute things and still be a man if that's how he feels? He's only 17 and he's so full of self-hate now. Ironically, it's been easier to support my genderqueer trans mass son and his trans partner, whose paths are also far from easy. I am so thankful for people like you who unambiguously support all gender diversity. Um, so I'm not just sharing this to big myself up. I think this is you know, my, my position of anyone should be able to wear anything and leave them alone is the majority trans rights position. But I do, I, I did want to say, like, we need to do better. I think it's not just that we should all just accept um, men who want to wear dresses, women who want to wear, you know, masculine clothes or whatever. Um, it's we should actively support it. And we should note that, like my friend, who considers themselves a femboy was getting attacks from all the gender criticals saying all the exact same thing <clears throat> all, all the same uh rubbish and all the same arguments all of the same conspiracy theories um as as i get all the time and and of course because 
we are viewed in some sense as the same thing. All LGBT people are. If you're, I mean, this kind of what the, the use and meaning of the word queer is, is if you are different to a cis heteronormative society, then they don't like you for it and they're going to abuse you. And one of the things they don't like the most is feminine men because patriarchy says all men have to be strong and masculine and well, not, st I mean, you can be a feminine man, still be strong. I mean, like kind of, you know, stereotype. Um, and it's, it's garbage and we need to actively fight against this stuff and make sure that guys like this feel welcome. And, and I, I do, I, I, I don't, I don't see this much from the LGBT community that I interact with. I do see it from gender critical LGBT people, particularly uh, cis gay men, um, but sometimes from like conservative trans people, you know, those conservative trans women like Blair White who, who feel like they can get acceptance if they follow gender rules to a letter. Um, you get it from those people, of course, but one thing that I do think, and kind of what caused me to share this is, you do sometimes see people joking that, oh, like, here's a man who likes wearing nail polish. Oh, is he a trans woman? Oh, maybe his egg's about to crack. Like, I don't like that. I get that this kind of, it can be kind of a joke. With your friends, it can be a joke. Um, but I don't think it's on to say that about just random people you don't know. Um, it, it, you know, if you are a guy, and especially if you're 17 years old, you're not going to be super secure in who you are yet. I, I mean, some 17 year olds are. I wasn't a 17. I think a lot of 17 year olds aren't. And <clears throat> if you definitely see yourself as a man, like, you know, it's just as uncomfortable for a cis man to be called as a woman as it is a trans woman to be called a man. Or there's obviously different power dynamics here and there's a lot of context of transphobia and stuff, but it's still it's still a form of misgendering. It's still uncomfortable for them. Um, and, you know, if it's your mate and, you know, they're secure in their gender identity and all this kind of stuff, I'm sh it's totally harmless. Absolutely agree. There are situations where you can joke about this kind of thing and it'd be harmless. But when it's just some passing by 17 year old boy who's like, oh, I hope that there's a community out for there for me who will support me wearing what I want to wear and being myself and still see me as a man. And they were like, oh, are you about to transition? He might be like, oh, this make I don't like this. I mean, uh, that's how I would feel. Um, and yeah, so I do think, like, I, I get that it's a joke, but I just don't think that it always comes across as a joke to people. And it's just not really worth it. Um, joke with your mates at the pub. It, you know, when you're, when you're just about to go and dry your hands on your penis, that's the time to make the joke with your mates, not really in, on a big platform in front of loads of people on Twitter. That's all I really wanted to say about that. I hope you agree. Um, <clears throat> but I've had, since saying this, I mean, I, I posted about this and it, it kind of went like British LGBT space viral, I guess. Um, and I, I got a lot of DMs off this of men saying, oh, this used to be me, or yeah, I feel like this is true for me. Um, and from a few other mothers who said that they supplied to their kids. So... Um, you know, that we see this kind of narrative sometimes in the gender criticals of like, oh, they're trying to trans my child or whatever. And and that's obviously nonsense. And this person, uh, this lady who's messaged me, doesn't have that vibe to me. She seems supportive. I mean, claims to have a, um, you know, trans son. So, I, I don't know. It's just just worth being aware of and, and, and just thinking before you make that comment. Um going forwards. Um, so, this, just before we get on to our conspiracy theorists of the week, I just wanted to show this little clip. So this is Posey Parker. This is just like a, a 20 second clip from her latest rally. Um, I think she's had a few rallies recently. I mean, she seems to just do a rally every day at the moment. Um, gets all the same people turn up at all of them. Um, they all get protested. And like Sophie was just saying, I think like she wants to create content. She wants to make a name for herself. Um, I've actually seen quite a lot of gender criticals this week complaining about her kind of using the effort and um, passion that the gender critical movement has brought. I was trying to be really 
<laughs> neutral and complimentary there. To her own, just to big herself up. Like, she's not in this... Like, even if you if you agree with the gender-critical pr principles and stuff, um, Posey Parker isn't in this for gender-critical... Like, she doesn't really care about this ideology. That She is in it for herself. I mean, she's actually wearing a t-shirt that says Icon on it here. Like, it's just so embarrassing. Like, she's so... You know, loves herself. It's really cringe. Um... But here is a, just a clip from her rally, and uh, just listen to what's good. It's a little bit quiet at the start, but you'll hear it at the end, I, I think. I did double check the sound on this. <laughs> kind of gormlessly looking around here. You're a man. You're a big, scary man. Who's she talking to? So the crowd was chanting Posey Parker's a fascist to the White Stripes uh, Seven Nation Army song, I think. Um, and she just hears it and turns around and just says to a group of people, like, 50 people, you're a man, you're a big scary man. It, I feel like that just shows how when they say this, it's just so meaningless. Like, she's just saying it into the, into the air. Like, not even talking to anyone in particular. Um, half of them women, half of them men, or well, presumably even in her ideology, you know, a mix of trans people and cis people, men and women, non-binary people, everyone, she just calls them all a man, and that's just so telling of gender critical. But then she says, fascist is what they call people who are legends. Like, it's the new word for legend. Um, I get when you are called a name enough, sometimes you identify with it. But I feel like if people are calling me a fascist and I thought fascists were bad, I wouldn't be like, yeah, mate, I'm a fascist, like, proudly, in the same way where it doesn't really seem like... <laughs> anyway, that is kind of what you expect from uh, Posey Parker, I think. Um... But before we go, we have one of my favourite parts of the week. Some more hilarity, and that is... Conspiracy Theorist of the Week. Um, so... This is going to be... Some more Transvestigation stuff, because I love Transvestigation stuff. So I found some little uh, snippets from one of my favourite transvestigators, who actually I saw today complaining about the term transvestigator, because um, they don't like how it makes it sound like you're going out and hunting for trans people, because in reality, we're everywhere. Uh, in every single government, every single you know position of power is a, a trans person. And they call us EGIs, which stands for Elite Gender Invert. And so they prefer the term, instead of transvestigator, which I'm sure soon they'll be saying is a slur, they, they like EGI analysis. <laughs> so this is from my, probably my favourite EGI analysis. So we've got this little, they, they love their little like um, paint, J they like their JPEGs, but you know when you get the kind of conspiracy JPEG that's just like a big wall of text and loads of diagrams stuff and it's like being compressed 50 times so you can't read it? All of my favourite EGI analysts make their own ones. So they they all have their own styles. And this is, if you know who this is, uh, you're allowed to go look them up as long as you just watch and enjoy and you don't start harassing these people. Because <laughs> I don't want them to stop doing it because it's so funny. At least for now, while they're not a danger to people. But, um... This is, uh, you'll recognise the style on this. Um, but anyway, so we have here, while sitting downtown, I took photos of random women I saw walking, very normal. I really couldn't see what I was looking for until I got home and examined the still images, then bam, female Q angle. Like, Q angles is one of their things. Uh, they love Q angles. And they really like gait, which is the term for how someone walks. So they've got... The female knees come apart, creating a triangle. Is a triangle, just to be helpful. 
Um, at the back, inline footfall swings outwards to propel the female skeleton forwards. <laughs> Just the skeleton. <laughs> um, so... But the reason this was a setup for just explaining a little bit of primer, you know, see the first image. And that's why, that's why we can confidently say Kanye West is female. Because, <laughs> because, because <laughs> look, here's a triangle. If you, if you draw a triangle on someone's knees, I mean, I'm not really sure what this is connected to. This is connected to the outside of his knee. This is connected to his kneecap. And this is like, next to his uh, obviously fake um, personal towel for drying his hands. Um, here's one with a little extra bit on it. Here's another one. <coughs> I mean, he's just got to be female. So there you go, we've sussed it out. We now know that Kanye West is a trans man. Um, I mean, obviously. Um, <coughs> So here's some more handy info. Um, because of her wide pelvis, when a female descends the stairs, her knees separate. Stairs! Stairs! The wide female pelvis causes the leg to swing out with creating a space between the knees. Here's the Q angle. This bit is the Q angle. Look, that's the triangle we're looking out for. Um, and the men's one, it's also a triangle, but that doesn't matter. That's not what, knees together, it's a man. Um, and last of all, Kanye West's female pelvis. Here we go. We've got an arrow point in that's no, you know, no one, no, no cis man walks like that with them feet. Like I don't know what's going on here. And there's another triangle. Like there you go. Now you know. Indisputably, there's no way back from this. But Kanye West. <laughs> it's a trans man. So um. I hope that's helped with your uh, your EGI checkbook. I feel like we should do... Do you remember those, like, Michelin Man um, I Spy books? Where it's like, I spy on the railway lines or I spy in the city or something. We need, like, an I spy EGI. <laughs> of, like, just all the famous people. And then you've got to go through and, like, circle their Q angles or something. How many Q angles have you seen today? Um... <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, that is the show. I'm a little disappointed about the tech issues. I felt like the first episode had, like, no tech issues and it went so well. And then we ended up having a couple of tech issues. But next week there won't be any tech issues. I would have sorted out the microphone a little bit better. I only got this, like, the other day. I haven't had time to set it up. It's going to be perfect for next time, I promise. Tell all your friends. The sound will be perfect. And we'll have next week's worth of wacky idiots and bad trans news to, to go through. Um, there was two things I wanted to cover this week, but I didn't, which maybe we can cover next week. We have an absolutely, like, if, if the hand drawing penis incident hadn't happened, I had the best clown of the week for you, but maybe clown of the week will be next, they'll, they'll be next week's clown of the week. <coughs> and um, some other garbage trans, anti-trans articles. So uh, there's loads of stuff to come. This will ne This show will never get boring. Because living through the trans panic means there is always nonsense. And, uh, yeah. So, if you like the show, please do like and subscribe. Write me a comment. Tell me to sort my sound out. Um, I appreciate the feedback. And I will see you all next week. 9pm UK time, Monday nights. Uh, we'll see you then. <laughs>